Hey guys, coming up on A to Z, the Hawks lose their GM as well, National Signing Day, and the real truth about Dansby Swanson. That's coming up next right here on A to Z. This is A to Z with Mark Zinno, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. How did we get here? If you're not the number one pick, guess what? You have no guarantee. That's where you are. And it starts. Does that make me a genius? Yes. Now. Good afternoon. Welcome to A to Z here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, where today I tell you it's all about just adding things up. Welcome in. We are live here on this Thursday. Appreciate you guys joining me as always. Three days left till Christmas, right? We're right around the corner. Hope everybody's having a wonderful holiday season. Give us a follow on Twitter at Locked On ATL. Of course, I'm at Mark Zinno, M A R K Z I N N O. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. We're on Roku TV. However, you get your Roku TV. On your Amazon Fire Stick, download that Roku TV app and make sure that you check out A to Z and the rest of the shows here on the Locked On Sports Atlanta Network. So uh, we've got a lot, of, lot to get to. You know, yesterday we did the show and then, uh, you know, we usually do it in the mornings. And um, by the time we had already posted, we had not heard the news about Travis Schlenk stepping down as the general manager of the Atlanta Hawks. And now Tony uh, or Landry Fields, rather, is going to uh, take over. and. It's interesting because I, the PR spin on this stuff always matters. Um, you know, Schlenk says he's going to reflect and prioritize his family. You know, you don't take a step back or a step down um, when you're in the situation that Schlenk is in, right? Like there's, there's not a GM. Nobody achieves the rank or, or the position of GM by turning around saying, you know, it's uh, I got I got to step away. Like they push through everything, right? And so as we've watched this whole thing unfold, and we started to see the rumblings that we're seeing this year, the fight between Trey and Nate McMillan about practice and the shoot around and the team not playing well, and you know, you, you look at a lot of the moves that preceded all this. You know, it was one of those things where. Uh, You know, they had to get rid of Kevin Herter to stay under the luxury tax and all that. And you get this move at a very odd time. Um, You know, it's, I get it's the holidays and all everybody wants to be with their family, but this is just a little bit odd timing when you talk about, you know, 31 games into a a basketball season, right? Like, it's just, it's not, none of it seems to make sense to me. And in reality, what I think of when I look at this and I put all this together um, this is just a nice way of uh, Travis Schlenk getting fired. That's what this is. I mean, you know, they allowed him to step down. Um, okay, sure. Let's go with that. I mean, in his statement, Travis Schlenk said, Tony and, I, uh, Tony and I have had multiple conversations about some of the personal things I've been going through and how I've been feeling. You know, to me, that feels like, hey, we got some philosophical differences at the top of this organization. I want to do one thing. You want to do another. I feel like we need to go here. You feel like we need to go there. And round and round we go. And so in all that round and round we go, you know, we end up with consternation, dissidents, you know, just people not genuinely on the same page. And look at the Hawks. Look where they are. Now, I don't want to sound all down on the Hawks and everything, but they're a mediocre team right now. Defense is bad. They've blown a bunch of leads. You know, you have a coach saying that he can't communicate with players. That's what Nate McMillan said this week. Um, none of this looks like it's headed in the right direction right now. And when your GM steps down and in favor, you give it to the guy who has a combined, like, two years experience as an assistant GM and a GM. Uh, that doesn't make a ton of sense to me. And it doesn't make a ton of sense to me. Why? Because you don't give those kind of jobs to people who have no experience. Right? Like Travis Schlenk spent 13 years working his way up, being an assistant GM and won multiple titles in Golden State. That's why he got the job to be the GM. Right? Go back and remember, remember when Wes Wilcox had to had to step aside or step down or get a lateral promotion, whatever you want to call it. Remember that? How quickly was he out the door after that? Uh, six months. By the end of the year, Travis Schlenk will cut ties with this organization. That's my bet. And uh, 
when you look at all this objectively, I, I don't see how this doesn't add up to some major changes coming. I mean, everything is on the table at this point in time. And my guess is the reason why, and I don't want to sound like I'm banging on Landry Fields here, but the reason why he got that job is because, you know, he's willing to do what the owner wants and not give any pushback. When you hire guys for high-level positions that don't have the experience and the, uh, you know, the, the requisite sort of, um, you know, uh, experience, I'll say it again, like they just don't have any matching sort of level of expertise in it. Uh, when you hire guys for that kind of job, um, it's because of one of two reasons. You are doing it because they won't push back and they will do what you tell them to do, or two, you're just stupid. I mean, you know, Jeff Saturday was hired to be an NFL coach, at least on an interim basis. You see it. Go look at Aaron Boone at the Yankees, who was taken out of a broadcast booth. Why? Because Joe Girardi wanted to manage one way for the Yankees, and Aaron Boone would do whatever Brian Cashman says, and every Yankee fan knows that Brian Cashman is effectively running this team on a day-to-day -day basis for the most part, at least philosophically. It could be as easy as that. that's what, where, what Landry Fields is just going to do it. Travis Lank wants because with uh, Tony Wrestler wants because, you know, if he had any sort of pushback on anything that Tony Wrestler wants, do you think Tony Wrestler gives him the job? Hypothetically speaking, if if Tony Wrestler said, "Well, we're going to start this thing over, Landry. I want you to blow it up. If you want this job, you have to blow it up." And and if Landry said, "No, I don't want to do that. I, th I think that's wrong." Do you think he has the job or vice versa? Landry said, you know, I, I want you to, 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 to build around Trey. And uh, Tony said, I want you to build around Trey. And Landry said, no, I, th I think we need to move on. I think we need to reset this thing. Do you think he has the job? Because I don't think he does. I'm not saying Tony Wrestler is meddling per se, but I think Tony Wrestler is tired of the process. I think he's tired of how long this has taken. And I'll go back to what I've said several times before. The Hawks making the Easter Conference Finals a couple of years ago was the worst thing that happened to that organization. It put everybody in a position where they thought that they were better than they were, and they weren't. Philadelphia got beat. The Hawks didn't beat them. And that's kind of how they got to the Eastern Conference Finals. And so now you're here, and you're in a situation where you are looking at a team that is in a state of flux right now. And on top of it all, the Hawks lost a tight game last night, 110-108 to 108 to Chicago at home. I mean, you know, this kind of thing reverberates throughout the entire building. It always has, and it always will. I mean, on the bright side, you know, the Hawks were the one uh, trailing, and, and uh, Chicago had the big lead, 16-point lead at one point in the second quarter, whatever it was. And Chicago only shot 29% from three, and, you know, Hawks could not, uh, could not pull out a win. But I think everything is on the table right now. I think Trey being traded, this thing being, being blown up is on the table. I'm not advocating for that. I'm just saying everything is on the table. There's no reason to believe that it's not. There's no reason to think that with a new voice, a new face, and a new everything, we're just going to continue to stay the course because guess what? He doesn't step down if you're staying the course because he's the one who set the course. Travis Schlenk set this course. What would he step down for? He's moving out of the way because effectively he's on his way out the door and he ain't coming back. It really is that simple. I, I don't know how you see it any other way. I don't know how you see this as, oh, this is a smooth transition. It's not like they just won a title and Schlenk decides, hey, I don't want to do this anymore. And you're just bringing the next guy up to keep everything, keep all the, the, the train on the track and the wheels in motion. No, it's none of this. You're a third of the way through the season and your GM just decides to step away. Something ain't right. And if you think it is, you're just not paying attention. All right, we want to get to uh, National Signing Day. It was a big day for Georgia. We'll get to that in a moment. First, a word from our friends at betonline.net. Fastest and easiest way to check in on all your sports betting needs. Find your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. You can get news and reviews of every league, for example, in the NBA. What does a move like this do to the Hawks championship odds? Things of that nature. Of course, you have college bowl season going on right now. NFL, Major League Baseball, NHL, combat sports, esports, even golf. It's all right there. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information. They've got podcasts loaded with information, live in game betting tips, scores. They have you covered. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action that's happening today, whether it is Thursday night football tonight. Got a lot of games on Saturday, a lot of games on Sunday. 
Bet online is the place to go. Bet online where the game starts. Um, all right. Also, we're going to get to Dansby Swanson coming up here later on after Shovels of Wisdom. Uh, some interesting notes from Alex Anthopoulos. But as the Falcons get set to take on this weekend, the Baltimore Ravens, make sure you check out Locked On Falcons. Make it your first listen every single day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. Biggest stories of the day. Instant reactions, big game recaps, plus the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Okay. Uh, National Signing Day was yesterday. And um, it was a very, very good day for Georgia, as expected. Um, They finished with the number two overall class, right behind Alabama, who had the number one overall class. Uh, And running down the top ten, Texas finished in third, Miami. In fourth, Ohio State fifth, LSU sixth, Oregon seventh, Oklahoma eighth, Notre Dame ninth, and Tennessee tenth. Uh, those were your top ten. Now, um, Alabama, obviously the biggest winners. You know, look, Alabama lost, uh, I think it was 19 people in the transfer portal. Um, they landed 27 recruits, 26 or four stars or higher. That's insane. They got five, six star recruits as well. They held on to the number one safety in the nation, landed the number one edge rusher in the country. Uh, and flip the number one offensive tackle from Iowa. So Nick Saban locks and reloads. Georgia does exactly what Georgia does. Uh, they flip running back uh, Kyron Jones from NC State. Uh, they got edge rusher Damian Wilson out of Florida. You know, uh, Kirby Smart had everything locked up where he wanted it to be by about noon yesterday. Uh, and and that's, it says to you kind of what he's done at Georgia and what he's built because he's able to make it that seamless to get these guys in and quickly on to 24. See ya. Done. So, um, yeah, it's very much a, a machine at Georgia that doesn't look like it's slowing down. You know, one of the next biggest winners, honestly, was uh, Kirby Smart's former understudy in Dan Lanning. Um, he had a huge, huge day. Um, he lost blue chip quarterback prospect Dante Moore at the beginning of the week, but what a rally he put together. Got a five-star edge rusher in Mateo Uiogalele. Same sound, sound familiar. Yeah. Five-star safety Peyton Bowen uh, flipped from Notre Dame. Um, and then he took another one from Notre Dame by getting running back Jaden Lamar. Uh, he also got Baylor quarterback commit Austin Navasad and LSU cornerback Dalen Austin. I mean, he is building Georgia East. It's really what he's doing. That team, I'm telling that team next year is going to be a juggernaut in the Pac-12. Like to the point where USC and UCLA might be glad that they left. Because what what Dan Lanning is building is just incredible. And Bo Nix is coming back. That's going to be a team that has legitimate college football playoff aspirations heading into next season. And if he wins the Pac-12 as much as and easily as I think he could could next year, yeah. Um it's going to be going to be very much a uh, uh, an interesting thing to watch how quickly that thing grows. Um, Auburn had a good day as well, um, but you know uh, you look at Texas too. Now that they have Arch Manning, um, you know that could be very interesting to see how they do. And Texas now heading to the SEC, it's going to be a fun watch for all this stuff. Um, Again, Notre Dame had a good class. I was kind of surprised at that, but they didn't sign a single five-star recruit because they got them all stolen by Oregon. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, what's also interesting, too, is that when you look at the landscape of what happened yesterday, LSU got better. Brian Kelly got more. Um like I said, Auburn, too, had a good day. Tennessee was still there. Like, the SEC continues to just roll. And uh, Miami might have been one of the bigger surprises. But but here's the thing. Mario Cristobal can recruit. He was able to do it at Oregon. Look at the team that Dan Lenning took over. It's not a bad team by any stretch of the imagination. But still, you know, again, um, I, I look at the rankings and I see where teams are, and you can tell the teams that are doing it right. Remember, guys. There is a, an, an actual formula of where you have to finish in your recruiting class every year to basically eliminate yourself from the college football playoff. If you don't finish at a certain ranking, uh, you won't make the college football playoff, period. You, you're automatically eliminated. 
um, blue chips, uh, blue chip, whatever. I forget the, the ranking system that they had, but they put it together every year and they've been tracking it. And all the teams that get a, a grade of X uh, have made the college football playoff. And all the teams that don't get a grade of X fail to make the college football playoff. So recruiting, obviously the lifeblood and NIL started to change a lot of this stuff too. Um, even if it, even if it's already sort of been there in a different way, I mean, it's now just more in your face that an NIL deal could flip a recruit before it was boosters doing it under the table. We've kind of all known this has happened for a while, whatever. I don't think anybody really cares one way or another, but um, now that you have NIL it sort of changes the game a little bit. And, and, and here's the other thing too. And remember this about recruiting, you know, Georgia didn't get a quarterback this year. Um, and I would argue they don't need one. With the transfer portal out there, it's so much easier to go get a college-made quarterback already. We talked about this with the NFL. Same thing with Falcons and Desmond Ritter. Yeah, on yesterday's show, looking at all the guys who are already in the NFL who could be a backfill option, theoretically, for the Falcons. Why? Because you already would rather have the ready-made quarterback. So if you don't have them, just go get one from another school. It's really simple. Like, you don't have to overthink it. I mean, we see, we see quarterbacks transferring all over the place. And it's no big deal anymore. <laughs> By the way, speaking of which, <laughs> um, I can't believe Florida uh, got Matt Gertz from, or Graham Mertz, Matt Gertz, Graham Mertz from Wisconsin. Mertz is terrible. <laughs> he's not a very good quarterback. If, if you've watched Wisconsin's offense, he's not very, I, I was kind of surprised to see Florida did that. That was one that was like, oh, hey, Florida, good job. Not. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, whatever. You do you, Florida. Uh, that's why they didn't finish in the top ten too. But we digress. All right, want to get to um, Alex Anthopoulos' interview with Jeff Schultz of the Athletic uh, and the Carlos Correa signing. Um, you know, and how it's reverberated with the Braves here. But first, a word from our friends at Built Bar. If you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet. Oh, you're depriving your life of one of the greatest joys. They have a new flavor, cookie dough chunk. It's delicious. It's indulgent. And it is covered in 100% real chocolate with real chunks of cookie dough. Guys, these things are delicious. Not only are they delicious, they're good for you. Only 160 calories, a whopping 15 grams of protein. What you do is you go get a box of Built Bar Puffs cookie dough chunk. And maybe you hide it away from the kids and the family, or you put it in your office, or you know you take Built Bars on the go. You have a snack in between meals, maybe late at night. That's what Built Bar is perfect for doing. They make great tasting bars, and they are delicious as well and healthy for you. Again, go to built.com, use the promo code Locked On fifteen. You'll get fifteen percent off your first order of Built Bar Puffs, Cookie Dough Chunk, or any other order for that matter. Locked On fifteen is the code at built.com uh, to get fifteen percent off your first order. Now, uh, before we get to Dansby, it's that time. Shovel of Wisdom. Brace yourselves because it's time for the Shovel of Wisdom. Yeah, you know how we do it every day. Somebody says or does something stupid, and I'm here to remind them that they are stupid. You can do so, too, on my Twitter account, at Mark Zinno. M-A-R-K-Z-I-N-N-O. Just use the hashtag Shovel of Wisdom. And today, my shovel goes to the New York Knicks. Uh, yeah. Do you remember how the Knicks signed Jalen Brunson in the offseason? He's pretty good. Um, but the New York Knicks have now lost a 2025 second-round pick as a result of the league's investigation into the team signing of Brunson this summer as a free agent. The NBA statement said, quote, this outcome reflected a finding of following an investigation that the Knicks engaged in free agent discussions involving Jalen Brunson prior to the date when such discussions were permitted, a.k.a. tampering. You tampered, you got caught, you lose a second-round draft pick, and because it's the Knicks and because it's typical of the Knicks, guess what? Uh, yeah, the second-round pick's probably going to be a player that goes off somewhere. Also interesting that um, – Brunson joined the Knicks on a four-year, $104 million contract. Knicks, during early in free agency this summer, um, the Knicks had hired his father, Rick, as an assistant coach during the offseason. So 
there's that, which begs the reason. Like, you didn't even really have to tamper, I guess, or have conversations if dad's in the house. But, you know, only the Knicks could screw that up. So there is that. Okay, speaking of screwing up, um, Dansby Swanson is gone. And now we know all the reasons why. Alex Anthopoulos gave an interview to Jeff Schultz of The Athletic. And um, the final offer the Braves made, now we know, is six years, $100 million. The Cubs came in for seven years for $177 million. This wasn't a small gap, folks. This was a huge gap. $77 million is not even – I mean, it, it's at, – at, when someone's offering you 177 somebody else comes in at 100 it's almost insulting. Uh, and Anthopoulos admitted that Swanson was willing to take a lot less to remain with the Braves, but the gap was still so big. So theoretically, even if the Braves got to 130, guess what? You're still $47 million short. <laughs> I mean, this just kind of exposes Liberty Media for what they are. And I don't blame Alex, and you shouldn't blame Alex either. And you certainly shouldn't blame Dansby. Um, yeah. I mean, you just didn't want to spend the money on the guy, which I can't understand why. Uh, it, it really is one of those things where Liberty Media is running a business, not a baseball team. And uh, I would tell you now, be thankful you got the championship you did because I don't know that you're getting another one. Now, you can poo-poo the Mets and Carlos Correa all you want, but go up and down that lineup, go around every single position and be objective about it and take the Mets guy and put it against the Braves guy. There's probably two, maybe three out of the nine, you know, or eight position fielders DH where the Braves are, are better than the Mets. The other seven go to the Mets, and we haven't even gotten into the starting staff or the bullpen, or anything like that. We're just looking at the lineup. That's objective across the board. And so the Mets are better than the Braves are right now. I'm not saying the Braves can't win. I'm not saying that the Braves can't, uh, you know, can't be competitive or, or, or even win the NL East again. What I am saying here is that you had an opportunity to build a dynasty. Liberty Media didn't want that. They got their championship. They got their money. They let Freddie walk, and now they let Dansby walk. Two years in a row, you let your best players walk right out the door. It's a bad signal. It's a bad sign. Everybody you signed to a deal was below market value of what they probably would be. You know, there's an argument out there, and you can make this argument. I think it's valid that instead of giving Spencer Strider all that money, and instead of giving Michael Harris all that money, why didn't you give it to Dansby? Let those guys play the next five years under salary control and arbitration and then deal with it then. Because after that point in time, Freddie's contract and Dansby's contract would be near the end. And who knows what happens? You might have two or three more championships under your belt. But you chose to pay those guys because you want salary control for a long time. Okay. Again, there's a difference between winning and winning championships. You want to build a dynasty, you need cornerstone pieces like Freddie Freeman and Dansby Swanson. You let him go. And guess what, Braves fans? I said it earlier in the week. I'll say it again. If you're just hearing it now, Max Fried is as good as gone. He will not be re-signed here. Unless he starts to tank and pitch bad, which in which case, why would you want to re-sign him anyway? But if he stays at the current level he's at, that dude's getting $200 million. You didn't give 160 to Freddie Freeman, and you didn't give 177 to Dansby Swanson. Guess what? You ain't giving 200 to Max Freed. That dude is gone. Kiss him goodbye. That's it. And that's what you have to deal with as a Braves fan. And it stinks. And, and don't think for one second, if you're really honest with yourself, would you rather have Liberty Media or Steve Cohen? Yeah, we all know the answer. We all know the answer. Everybody would rather have Stephen. I'm a Yankees fan. I'd rather have Stephen Cohen than Hal Steinbrenner at this point. Steve Cohen's a lot more like George Steinbrenner because that dude didn't care about anything other than winning. And he told the world about it, and he rubbed it in your face when he did. 
That's the kind of owner you want. You're owned by a corporation. What are you going to do? Hope it works out for the Braves. Not sure that it 100% is going to, but I hope it does. Again, I think the Braves can be competitive. I think that they can win games. They can win titles. I don't uh, win division titles, rather. I don't think they win World Series anymore. I think it's deja vu for Braves. You're going to go another 10 years winning division titles, going to the playoffs every year, and then guess what? You're going to have one title to show for it. And then you're going to be kicking yourself. Well, metaphorically kicking yourself. You won't be doing it, but, you know. And Alex Anthopoulos is a great GM. And it, and if Alex Anthopoulos worked for the Mets, they would have, like, you know, two World Series easily right now. When you have an owner like that who's willing to spend, it makes life really easy. So he doesn't have to be that good at his job, even though he's superb at it. So, anyway, that's the situation. I'd be frustrated. I mean, Braves fans are mad at Dansby, and they're poo-pooing the Mets side. I, I don't understand how you can be mad at Dansby. Be mad at your ownership. It's a joke. It really is a joke. And, and you know, Dansby's going to be fine in Chicago. And if you think that it won't win or can't win or whatever, it doesn't matter not what it's about at least not for him not anymore so all right uh falcons game coming up uh this weekend want to remind you guys to make locked on falcons with my buddy aaron freeman your first listen for your next listen check out the locked on sports today podcast biggest stories of the day plus instant reactions big game recaps and the take of the day it's available on the odyssey app youtube and wherever you get your podcasts final note here uh this will be the final show for me on A to Z on Locked On Sports Atlanta here in 2022. I want to wish everybody a wonderful, happy, and healthy holiday season. Uh, Make sure you guys take care of your family, friends, and loved ones, uh, and and, and give yourself some grace this holiday season. It's not easy on everybody. You know the mental health thing is big, and all I'll say is uh, I'm wishing you guys all well. You know, sports is, is fun, and we go back and forth on Twitter, and we argue and all the other stuff, but when it's all said and done, Uh, Make sure you guys give some love to those around you who need it. And uh, hopefully you'll get some in return. So uh, that'll do it for A to Z here in 2022. Follow me on Twitter at Mark Zinner. You guys can always get me there. Please check out my Hazard Ground podcast, which is my uh, military-related podcast. And uh, uh, give a follow there as well at Hazard Ground. And uh, I'll see you guys on the flip side in 2023. God bless. Take care. And as I always say, you guys have a great day. Don't take any crap from anybody. See ya.